Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to the Tayabji Show. No, please do not adjust your sets. I am not Judy Tayabji. My name is Michael Smith. I'm the, the political columnist for the Vancouver Province newspaper, and I'm filling in for Judy for a few days, who's taking a, a well-deserved uh, Christmas break. Uh, we've got a terrific show uh, for you today. We're going to be talking about one of the most compelling political issues uh, facing the province of British Columbia today, and that's the Recall uh, in, and Initiative Act. And what's going on with this is there are two recall campaigns that are now in full swing against uh, two NDP politicians, members of the legislature. Uh, the stakes are extremely high in this debate. Uh, if the campaigns are successful, uh, it could actually trigger the downfall of the NDP government. That's how important this debate is. Um, we have uh, two uh, guests in the studio today, Troy Lanigan of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation and Graham Bobrick, who is an NDP MLA for New Westminster, who's been the subject of some recall threats himself. So I, I invite you to stick along and, and with the program, we'll have your phone calls. And uh, right now we're going to show you uh, some background on the recall debate so you can have an idea about today's program. And here it is. The fantasy world of BC politics has gotten a lot stranger lately with efforts to recall MLAs and throw them out of office. The papers have been signed and campaigns are underway in two northern ridings. Much of the spotlight is on Education Minister Paul Ramsey. Some voters in Prince George are signing petitions to remove him from office. People behind the campaign complain Ramsey hasn't done enough for the local hospital. Paul Ramsey was the Minister of Health in this province for a number of years. And in my opinion, he sat back and watched the gutting of Prince George Regional Hospital, your hospital. And passions are running high in the north, split between those who want to keep Ramsey and those who want to kick him out. We all say no Canada, and we all believe in good government. We have strong opinions, and they're different ways. Unlike you and many up at the front, I do care about Prince George, and I will make a difference every day. Hey, you and your Paul Ramsey, a bunch of liars. Sit down and listen. Prince George isn't the only riding facing this. In the Skeena riding, MLA Helmut Giesbrick faces two separate recall petitions. In the Kootenays, some voters are considering a run at Agriculture Minister Corky Evans. And in Comox, a campaign has started against NDP MLA Evelyn Gillespie. Oh, no, that one launched by a constituent who claims the MLA never returned his phone calls when he needed help with a child custody issue. I've asked Ms. Gillespie on at least 20 occasions to help me. I've faxed her, I've written her, I have uh, walked into the office to uh, see if she was there. Needless to say, nothing has been done. She's chosen to ignore me. I wouldn't be talking to you today if she'd have called me back. Well, in this particular case, uh, there's an individual who has uh, a grievance with me in particular, and uh, I think that the appropriate route is for the two of us to work out this situation. Back in Prince George, the education minister says he's confident, but he's going ahead with a lawsuit against the Vancouver province newspaper and a Prince George radio station claiming he was libeled in news reports about recall. I've been very gratified by the response uh, here in Prince George, both from my uh, friends and supporters who stood up for me and uh, for the work that I've been doing for our community uh, in the north. Uh, they've been joined by people who have not in the past uh, supported me, but who believe that this current use of recall is an abuse of a good process. So what next? Organizers of the Ramsey and Giesbrick recalls have until February 3rd to sign up 40% of voters eligible to vote in the last provincial election. They need 8,908 signatures in Prince George and 7,558 in Skeena. If they get those, the MLAs automatically lose their seats and the government would have to call by-elections. Until then, a lot of planning, door knocking and decisions on whether to sign the petition. Yeah, 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 I'll sign it if they come to my door. How come? Why? Because he, uh, he wasn't truthful about what he was saying. I think it's more towards the provincial government than really him. I think they're just trying to get back at them through him. And yeah. So when, uh, when they come to your door to ask you to sign the petition, what do you intend to do? Um, I'll probably say no, because I don't really know of any particular thing that he's done wrong. 
As you can see, the opinions are split on this issue and the emotions are running high. When we return from the break, we'll uh, chat with our guests about it and we'll take your phone calls. Please stay with us. It's Christmas in Canada, where wishes come true. I have a thousand things to do. I'm wishing for help to get it all done. To share the joy with everyone. Sears is the one place where you'll find all you need and more. It's your Christmas wish store. Come see the merry side of Sears. When you need to stop a cough, get fast-acting, long-lasting relief with Vicks Formula 44. One dose coats your cough-irritated throat to start soothing in five minutes and can last through the night. For fast-acting, long-lasting relief, get Vicks Formula 44. The Grime Zones. They're tough. They're all over the house. And they're about to meet their match. Yes, Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean's got the muscle for tough grime like stovetop grease, mudroom muck, and kids being kids dirt. It all shines clean because Mr. Clean muscles under to lift off dirt faster, better than the leading pine cleaner. Mr. Clean takes the tough out of grime zones everywhere. Let the clean shine through with Mr. Clean. What's CoverGirl's nail pick? Nail slicks. Base, color, and top coat, all three combined in one step. Easy. A three-in-one polish. How in the world? Easy, breezy, beautiful. Cover girl. What do you get with Amigo Digital? Every month you get 100 anytime minutes and 100 first incoming minutes free. Yeah, I'm free. You get called display. Staying in touch doesn't mean staying in. And oh yeah, there's no long-term contract. I call the shots. And you get it all for just $19.95 a month. Amigo Digital. It goes with you. Welcome back to Tyabji. Our topic today is the recall legislation introduced by the NDP government and the recall campaigns going on against two NDP MLAs. It's a very passionate issue. It's provoked a lot of controversy in our province and uh, we're very happy to have two excellent guests uh, here in the studio to talk about it today and I'd, I'd like to welcome now uh, Graham Bobrick. Graham is the NDP MLA for the riding of New Westminster. Right. Thanks very much, Mike. It's Thanks for being here. Thanks for coming on, Graham. You're on your holidays. You actually took a break from your holidays to come Absolutely. in. Absolutely. It's an important issue. It's very kind of you. And we also have Troy Lanigan of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation and uh, a very uh, high-profile proponent of the Recall Act here in BC. Has attracted uh, considerable controversy himself. Troy, thanks a lot for Thank coming for on the program me. today. Um, we'll just uh, talk a little bit about uh, how we got to this point. Uh, Graham, I know that uh, early on in, in the process, uh, there were actually some recall threats uh, leveled against yourself, which didn't really didn't really pan out. But I understand you have some strong opinions on how the act uh, the act as it exists now and how it's being uh, how it's being used, in, especially in the two campaigns that are going on right now. Well, I should stay at, uh, state at the outset that I support uh, the recall law. I think it's important to have. Uh, that form of accountability open to the people of British Columbia. It's important that that accountability is there for the people of Prince George and Skeena and anywhere else in the province. I think the issue with a lot of people, though, is how is the law being used? Or more correctly, perhaps, how is it being abused? Uh, is recall there uh, so that people can fight the last election over again? Or is the recall law there to make sure that the constituents can go after an MLA who's done some grievous wrong? Maybe he's or she has committed a crime, for example. Uh, you know, so, and furthermore, is it something that should be used as a political tool by outside interest groups to come into a riding and to manipulate the voters of that riding and say, we want you to recall your MLA when the real agenda is to tr try to take on the whole government. Okay, well now we're, now we're getting into the area where the government has some, co some, uh, some gripes about how the recall legislation is being used. And Troy, maybe you give us your opinion on this. Is, is this uh, legislation being abused by special interests well, and outside groups? No, of course. Our position is that the only abuse is by Glenn Clark and his government in the last election, who denied British Columbians an informed vote and that people will now use this new tool of accountability 
to try and right that wrong by returning the mandate back to the people of British Columbia is a perfectly appropriate use. And we have supported citizens who wanted to use that legislation. But let me state categorically that it is the decision of those people locally whether or not they engage in this new tool of accountability, well, which has a very there. high threshold. The threshold. question You're I have for you then, Troy, is why didn't you just leave it up to the people locally? Why did you, as an outsider, your organization, the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, an organization which is federally incorporated, based out of Ontario with a BC branch, why did you interfere with the people of Prince George? Why didn't you let the people of Prince George decide for themselves? I mean, you've already pumped, you and your organization have already pumped over $11,000 into Prince George and Skeena to try to mess things up, stir things mess, up, so okay, to speak. Okay, let's, let's let him yeah. answer. What do you, what, how do you, how do you respond to that? I'm glad that we spent that money, and I'm glad we supported them, but we've done nothing that wasn't at the invitation of people locally. Look, you have nobody to blame but yourself and your government. If you had not knowingly deceived the voters of British Columbia about the financial position of the province, our organization would have never been involved, I can guarantee you of that. But you chose to do that, that was a decision that was made by the government and the party at the time, and now you're going to pay the price well, for it. Now the, the, the campaign as being organized in the, in the riding of Prince George, let's take that for example. Now I know that the day that those, those petition writs were filed down at the Elections BC office, Troy, you were in town mm -hmm. for that, and you uh, sort of helped out some of the... Uh, some of the recall people. That would, that would appear to suggest that the Canadian Taxpayers Federation does have some involvement, but you're, you're saying it's just behind the scenes. Is that your, your opinion? No, no yeah. we, we support these campaigns fully, but uh, we've decided to take a back seat, if you will, while uh, these campaigns proceed, because ultimately it has to be a decision between the voters and their local representative, okay. or their representative but, but of the okay. party. If, that I just, they're if from. I could just stop you there <laughs> just for a second, Graham. We've covered a lot of ground here very quickly. So what we'd like to do now is uh, show you a little background uh, on this issue so you can get an idea exactly what we're talking about. We're going to go to some graphics on this today uh, right now. Um, here's how the Recall Act works. Uh, once Elections BC has officially approved the recall application, organizers have 60 days to gather enough signatures to topple their MLA. Now once those petitions are completed, Elections BC has another 42 days to verify the signatures and that could be contentious in the, in the two campaigns we have now. Uh, there are spending limits uh, for those gathering the names on the petition and also for the MLA who's to trying to defend his or her seat in the legislature. Um, if the spending limits are exceeded by those gathering the petitions, uh, the effort will be declared invalid and the petition will fail. Uh, if everything adds up and the petition succeeds, the MLA would lose their seat and a by-election must be called within 90 days. And the recall MLA, recalled MLA may run in that, in that by-election. So, that's how the legislation works, and that's how we got here today. Um, as, you, as you know, there are two campaigns going on right now against two NDP politicians because the New Democrats have such a small majority in the House. That's why we're seeing such passionate uh, exchange of views on this issue. Um, we're going to open the phone lines, and uh, let's go to our, uh, our first call. Um, Kevin in Victoria. Kevin, are you there? I'm here. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hi, Kevin. What have you got to say to our guest today? Well, I... I believe that this is not um, what was intended when uh, when the people voted to put the recall legislation forward. Um, I think that uh, it was intended that if people break the law, if they abuse um, the criminal laws of the provinces, when this tool should be used. I'm from Alberta, and I was um, uh, I donated to the Canadian Taxpayers Federation once, and and have received their mail for life. And I think Troy's doing a great disservice to the taxpayers of BC by becoming involved in what's essentially a, a tool used by the Christian right to show their displeasure with legislation brought forward by this government. Okay. Terry well, Simpson and the crew. Yeah, okay, Kevin, thanks a lot for your call. Okay. I'm going to get a quick response from our guests about that. Now, um, there have been some talks about narrow-minded interest groups being involved in some of these games. I believe he, he mentioned the name Carrie Simpson, who is uh, sort of a religious right uh, family values crusader here in BC. She, in fact, has been involved in, in marginally in some of the campaigns. But, um, you know, the other point, too, is he talks about kicking out MLAs because they're convicted of crimes. Now, the Act doesn't say that. It doesn't say you have to be convicted of a crime. deal with... Uh, conflict of interest or criminal activities. Uh, that's not what this is about. The minute that you constrain why it is or the reasons that you can recall an MLA is putting into the hands of the very people you're recalling the decision as to whether but, or not they can proceed. But this, debate, that. this debate is not about cons constraining that right. This is about, uh, there's a whole debate going on and quite a legitimate debate about how this law should be used. 
And that's why the motives of your organization are called into question, because people are saying, this is the first time the law has been used, and they're saying, uh, so how should it be used? And the caller, in my view, correctly states that most people conceive of this law as being used for the most serious transgressions by an MLA. Okay. It was not intended to be used by an organization such as yours to come in as an outside group and to try to tell local people what they should do, whether they should okay. recall their MLA. It's nothing to do with Paul Ramsey. It's everything to do with the fact that your organization has a problem with our government. Okay, Graham, I'm going I'm to stop you just right there, and I'm going to give you a chance to respond, Troy, because I know you want to respond to that. But right now, we just want to go to a guest that we have on the phone. Now, one of the things that's going on is we have two recall campaigns going on right now, and what we're seeing is, this, is the possibility of a kind of a domino effect happening here, because we're hearing rumblings about other recall campaigns against other politicians. Now, now one man who who is, uh, is threatening to begin a recall campaign is uh, Robert St. Amour of Comox. Uh, he is threatening to launch a recall effort against Evelyn Giesbrecht, another NDP backbencher. Uh, Les uh, uh, Evelyn Gillespie, excuse me. And uh, we have him on the line right now. Um, just to give you a little background about, about his uh, situation, uh, Mr. St. Amour has, uh, had been involved in a custody dispute um, with his former wife. He went to Ms. Gillespie to try and get some help on that. He says that uh, she ignored his concerns and now he's angry enough that he's going to start uh, a recall campaign against her. And let's speak to him now. Hi, Robert. Are you there? Yes, I certainly am. Hi, Robert. Um, how's the recall effort going so far? Surprisingly well and getting an overwhelming response to it. I never expected this to snowball as fast as it did. It doesn't appear that the NDP have very many friends left. And what have you done? You haven't actually filed for a petition at this point, I understand. Is that right? No. Most of the advice I've been given was to wait till after Christmas and uh, not mix uh, politics and the holidays. There didn't seem to be any sense in ruining Christmas with uh, politics in the kitchen at that time. Uh, do you think that you're taking a, a sort of a personal vendetta uh, against this politician? I mean, you have an individual complaint with an MLA, and yet you're willing to, to uh, use that as an argument to basically ruin her career is basically what, you, what you're doing. Do you think that's fair? Oh, absolutely. I, 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 I totally disagree with the representative, the MLA uh, representative from the NDP. This is absolutely uh, uh, an individual thing between myself and the, uh, the representative here. It started out like that. Uh, as it grew, it was obvious that there was an anti-NDP motion. But to, to dismiss this as frivolous or as one-sided is ludicrous. Uh, 17,050 other people have to put their signature down on a piece of paper and agree with me. This is far from a whim. If, if he dismisses this or anybody dismisses this as frivolous or as, as using the legislation wrong, I think that's ludicrous again. This is ex excellent uh, legislation. It puts the power right back to the people. It's up to them to agree or to disagree with me. It wouldn't matter what I, I said on a petition. They have still got to agree with me. The 40% the of this constituency has to do that. And I don't see any problem with that. That is the most direct democracy I've ever seen in my life. That's, that's just direct accountability, in your, in your opinion. Absolutely. I'm not retrying this election. That's absolute insanity. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, okay, well, you know, well, thank you very much, Robert, uh, for calling in, and uh, we'll let you go with that. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Right. I agree. Graham. I agree with the caller. You know, I mean, it sounds like what he's doing up there is he has an individual dispute uh, with his MLA. Now, in my opinion, that's not going to go very far in terms of recall, um, but I'm not equating his situation with the situation in Prince George North and in Skeena, where we've had the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, we've had Kerry Simpson and others involved as outside organizations okay. uh, trying me, to bring down the government. Let me just stop you there because we have to go to a commercial. Obviously, we're covering a lot of territory. When we come back, we'll continue with our guests and your phone calls. Stay with us. Tyab She is brought to you in part by Metro Lexus Toyota, leaders in customer satisfaction. Merry Christmas, baby. Hi, sweetie. How's LA? <laughs> yeah, they too bad there. Yeah, the place is looking fine. Pretty empty, though. Any chance you could hop on a plane? Be here for Christmas? Yeah. Yeah, I missed you too. Uh, there's someone at the door. The Make-A-Wish Foundation of Canada makes wishes come true for children with life-threatening illnesses. Tara's wish was that her dog, Boomer, 
appear in a national television commercial. WIC is a corporate parent to this and 20 other television and radio stations across Canada. We support the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Like you, we care about this community. So anyway, this is Boomer, and this is Tara, and this is a wish come true. It's only a little scratch. Here a scratch, there a scratch, everywhere a scratch, scratch, and they all look awful. What you need is GT88 Scratch Remover. It's from the makers of DD7. GT88 gets rid of all those surface scratches and paint swirls quickly and easily. Simply rub it into the scratch, then polish to a beautiful finish. The scratch is gone. GT88 is not an abrasive, and it works perfectly on any color. Would you do this to a brand new Jaguar? Ouch! But GT88 removes that awful scratch quickly and easily. It'll even remove paint scrapes and ugly rust. GT88 is only $19.95. But order now and get a second tube for only $10. That's two for just $29.95. Order your GT88 scratch remover now. Call toll-free 1-800-937-0874 or send $19.95 for one tube, $29.95 for two tubes, plus shipping to the address on your screen. Order now. That's 1-800-937-0874. Hi, welcome back to Tyabji. I'm Mike Smith of the Vancouver Province filling in for Judy. Our topic today is the recall legislation uh, introduced by the NDP government and the two recall campaigns going on right now uh, against uh, two NDP politicians. Stakes are extremely high. We've already had a good exchange of views. My guests are uh, Graham Bobrick of uh, NDP MLA for New Westminster and Troy Lanigan of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. Now, Troy, I just wanted to give you a, a chance just to respond to a couple of things that Graham said before we went to the break, just real quickly. Now, this, the fellow we had on the phone earlier said, this is a tool of accountability, um, and he, that's all he's, he's just trying to hold NDP politicians accountable, but he's also got a fairly narrow agenda. He's got a personal gr gripe against, uh, against one MLA. Right. Recall can't be abused because it requires the signatures of those constituents and a tremendous number. Expressed as a percentage who cast ballots in the, in the last election, it's 60 to 65 percent in most ridings. But I want to make another point too that was brought up in the discussions that we've had and that is that we can somehow separate MLAs as individual representatives from the government. Well, that's simply not the case. I mean, the minute you're elected under a party banner, you become property of that party, period. And it's perfectly acceptable for constituents to judge you and to hold you accountable on the basis of how you vote under your party banner. Because that's really what you are. You're a functionary of the party in which you're sent to represent at the legislature, not a representative of the individual area. And that's why you see a lot of these individual constituents raise the kinds of issues and concerns so they do because they're not sticking up for the community, they're the sticking up for their parties. It's the cumulative effect as well that uh, quite often there are a lot of, sure, everyone's got an individual reason to sign a petition, but if the cumulative effect is if you trigger that 40%, that should be a, enough of a message to the government. The number and one uh, thing they do as an MLA is vote by what their party tells them right. to vote, period. Okay. Let's so stop. why Let not hold them accountable on that basis? Let me stop you right there and we're going to go to the phone lines. The phone lines are jammed, as they say in the parlance. Uh, uh, line five is Carol from Campbell River. Hi, Carol. Hi. Hi, how are you today? Fine, thank you. What's, uh, what have you got to say about a recall? Well, I am considering a recall of Glenn Robertson in this area. Oh, here we go. Here we, got, here we have another one now. So go ahead and tell us about it. Um, well, I, I believe that the government has to be accountable. They aren't now. Once, once an MLA gets in, they vote party line. It doesn't matter what their constituents say. What's, what's your issue that you, uh, what's your beef with Glenn Robertson? Well, there's a, there's a lot of beefs, there's a lot of beefs, but I guess the one that took the cake was that he uh, refused to represent the ferry users um, in, their, in their concerns when the, when the rates were jumped, and um, he was asked flat out if he would represent the concerns, and he would not answer yes or no. Mm-hmm. But interestingly enough, I know that he has now come out publicly along with Evelyn Gillespie, the MLA we were speaking about earlier, and have criticized their own government for raising ferry fares. Now, do you think they would have done that if there hadn't been a threat of recall hanging over their no, heads? No, I don't. Yeah. Right. I think that it was only because of the threat of recall that they did that. Well, there's some direct accountability for you. Well, thanks very much, Carol, for calling in. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, let's try one more phone call here, um, Cecil in Squamish. Hello, Cecil. Hi, how are you doing? Great. Good. Uh, I have two points that I'd like to make. The, uh, the, the government uh, listened to the people and put in the recall. The purpose of the recall was to give the people the right to say you're not doing the job that we put you in there to do. 
the biggest concern I have is that the people are interpreting the recall in the manner in which they voted for it, while the government's interpreting in a manner that says it's there to protect us against you from calling us and or recalling us. And, and this is really disturbing because <laughs> the number of people in the province are saying, wake up and smell the roses. You did wrong. You lied when you, when you ran on your platform. We disagree with it. Now we're going to come back and say you're not doing a good job. The second point that I want to make, and I think it's very important that we understand, it doesn't matter who leads the, the charge. The government has its group that goes out and, and gets its votes for them, such as labor, and works on their behalf and puts them into power. While at the same time, the public, when they want to do a recall, have the right to solicit any group to come in and assist them to do it, because the average person is not qualified or capable to deal with the issue. Okay, Cecil, so let, me, let me just stop you right there because we're coming up to another break and I want to get a reaction from our guest. Uh, Graham, you heard what he said. Well, uh, once again, I don't disagree with the viewer. People have a right to recall an MLA for any reason they wish. That is their legal right under this legislation. Glenn Clark's going to take that have, right away from them, no, right? He's going to change Clark, the legislation. Glenn Clark never said that. But ah. the people have the right, the people also have the right to be fully informed during a recall campaign. And if Troy Lanigan and the Canadian Taxpayers Federation are bringing in outside money and they're spending it in the riding and they're, they're buying ads and they're, they're promoting a particular agenda, I mean, we know that Mr. Lanigan has been down to the States, has been involved with quite right-wing groups down there, uh, you know, the Republicans, the okay. Leadership Institute in Virginia. They have a right to know that and make a fully informed decision. And I have full confidence in the wisdom of the people of British Columbia in Prince George and in Skeena and elsewhere that they will reject that kind of okay. outside influence let in me their riding. Let me, gonna gut the law. Let me stop you right there. Let me, let me stop you right there. Nonsense. Let me stop you right there, guys, because we do have to go to a commercial and we'll get your response when we come back. Please stay with us right after these breaks. We'll be back. My name is Gina Cardella, and I'm a single mom with three children. Dressing kids for school costs a fortune. When the girls go off to school, they have to look great. Kids are very hard on their clothes. Jeans, uniform, shirts, it's a big investment. I don't skimp on my detergent. This leading bargain powder can leave cottons looking old, but Tide keeps cottons looking more like new, wash after wash. The way the children look is a reflection on me as a mom. In the end, it's all worth it. We both have colds. Why is he up and at him? And I'm so tired and cranky and headachy, I can't even get started. Why? Because last night when he said, Let's take NyQuil so we can feel better in the morning. I said, why? What's the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, achy, stuffy head fever so you could rest medicine got to do with morning, silly? He took it. I took these. He got rest. I didn't. Why? Vicks NyQuil, the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, stuffy head fever so you can feel better the next morning medicine. Ooh, here's a cheesy moment you might want to miss. And here's one you don't. Take nachos, peppers, grated mozzarella. Cover the nachos with cheese. Sprinkle on the peppers. And heat until the cheese is melted. That's so cheesy. Ooh, it's scary. This cheesy moment is just a reminder. When you've got cheese, you've got choice. Careful, boss. Don't let the punch knock you out. Ouch, boss. Well, some things have changed. Everybody knows that you don't have to be hammered to be driven by common sense. Well, honey, that's not a couch. That's my boyfriend. Yeah, right. If I'm too tired or have a drink, I call a relative, a friend, a cab, or I call Operation Red Nose. OK, guys, last call before you hit the road. Hi, welcome back to Tayabji. Uh, our question of the day, we're hearing a lot about the possible recall of politicians forcing new elections in their ridings. Do you see this as a benefit or a threat to the democratic process and why? Here are some of your reactions to that question. I think it's a benefit for the democratic process. It makes the politicians more accountable. I would like to see that they wouldn't have to have a 40% of the constituents sign a, a form or a, a petition in order to get some action if uh, they could 
make it a little easier on the public that uh, express their desires and if the politician isn't following what they feel is appropriate, make it easier for them to get their hands on the politician and uh, do something about it. <laughs> Total benefit to hear the public's opinion. More, more is being lost in, in, in the way that it's been run over the years. It's so, um, the whole system, it needs to be rerun. It's, it's, it's ancient. It's England all over again. So recall is a benefit. Sure. Sure. Get better opinions. I got to go. Okay. Thanks. I think it's a threat right now. I think that people are using it as a threat rather than uh, for any really good purpose. I think it's a threat to the democratic process. I think to, to um, ask a, an MP for recall for the BC ferries is, um, is not appropriate. If he was not doing a job and good job in government, then I would think about recall, but not just for to use it as a threat. As you can see from that, we've got a wide variety of opinions on this issue. And before we go back to our guests and, and to your phone calls, I just wanted to, uh, we, we talked briefly about the possibility of Glenn Clark actually uh, repealing or possibly amending this legislation so it makes it tougher to recall politicians. Um, he says now that it's time for a review of the legislation because it's not being used the way he, he and the rest of the government felt it was going to be used. I just want to read one quote for, for our viewers. This was Glenn Clark speaking in the legislature when the legislature was introduced a few years ago. Now he said, this is Glenn Clark speaking, remember, no longer in BC can any politician of any party simply say, too bad, we're here for four or five years, we'll do whatever we, uh, we want, and you can defeat us four years from now. With this bill, we have to be the conscience of the wisdom of our constituents. We have to have faith that the voters of BC have the wisdom to make decisions, and all of the wisdom certainly does not lie in this chamber. What he's basically saying is, the government's not afraid to give the people the power to kick them out of office if they're not happy with them. So now well, we, now well, he's saying... That's when it's used against Glenn well, Clark. You know, that's, right. that's just a gross oversimplification in terms of what the Premier said on Friday. He said, after this process, and I want to emphasize that, no one wants to change the rules of this game. Right now, the, where recall campaigns are underway, the, the rules are as they stand. But the fact is that after the process is over, the Premier said, maybe a review is in order. Now that makes a certain amount of sense. We know right now, and I'm sure that Troy, I'm sure both of you will agree with me that right now up in uh, Skeena, Helmut Giesbrecht, the MLA, because there are two petitions against him, he is, his spending limit doubles. That isn't right. Helmut Giesbrecht has said he will not spend that amount, but that's because there are certain holes in the legislation well, in terms of the technicalities of how it operates. I don't think he's, we're, people are too worried so much about the spending limits as, as they are, but he will bring in amendments to the bill that will pretty much make it impossible to work. Like he might come in and say, well, you know, now you have to be convicted of a criminal act to, yes. in order to be kicked out of office. That's, that's, that's not, that was not the That's a legitimate fear. This uh, legislation was brought in as a result of a referendum, and any changes to it should be again go to the people uh, as a referendum. How many supported? How many supported re uh, recall in that referendum? Eighty percent. Eighty-one percent voted in favor. Yeah. If it's an overwhelming mandate. Okay, let's let's go back to the phone lines now. The phone lines again are jammed. Uh, Glenn in Vancouver. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Let's go to uh, Ray in Kitimat, all the way from Kitimat. Yes, Hello, good, af good afternoon. I have a couple questions for Troy Lanigan. I've talked to him before. Hi, Ray. Um, Troy, you've mentioned up here in the north that uh, the Canadian Taxpayers Federation is backing away from uh, this recall. That's an outright lie. You're in it right up to your eyeballs. And again, I'll repeat to you, Troy, if you don't like the Alcan Agreement and you don't like the Columbia Cellulose Settlement, and you are still totally involved in recall. You've been into the riding many, many times. Get your butt up here and debate with me these issues so the people of Skeena can see what you really represent. You are a leech on society. Your methods oh of fundraising are questionable. The people of the Consumer Association have said this. You should get a real job and quit being a leech on society. Just, just a moment, Ray, could I just quickly ask you what your job is, just so we know who we're talking to here? Yes, my job, I'm a spokesman for the recall, uh, the anti-recall group. What do you work for, Ray? And uh, I'm So you're working, you're working for that. Helmut Giesbrecht, is that correct? Pardon? You're working for Mr. Giesbrecht. Uh, yes, I am. Okay, well, let's just... MLA, 
who is being persecuted and an attempt to destroy his reputation by Troy Lanigan, who knows nothing about the riding of Skeena. And Troy Lanigan is using this issue to raise funds and pay his wages, which is a disgrace. Okay, Ray, thank, thank you very much for your phone call. I wish you'd tell us how he really feels. <laughs> <laughs> um, Troy, how do you respond to that? Well, I don't know. I think <laughs> Mr. Brady, who can't see the show right now because he's been told this program's on, he's been told to call in, as he has everywhere I've gone in the province for the past while, I would spend, he should spend his time going door to door speaking to Mr. Giesbrecht's record instead of calling and attacking me all the time in such a personal and vicious nature. Well, you know nature. what he's asking for, Troy? He's asking for accountability from you. You asked for oh, accountability from accountable. politicians, and now he's saying, you've been spending money in this riding. Yeah, and I've disclosed you, it, unlike your been, party's You've done. been completely involved up here. We want yep. you to be accountable. And he's challenged you to a debate in Kitimat. He's a city councillor in Kitimat. He represents the people of he Kitimat. He represents the union He in wants you to debate him, and yep. today you said no, and I ask you right now, will you go up and debate no, I'm, but I Mr. Thought, Brady? I, you did well, I, have made, I have made a statement saying I'm not going back up into oh. those constituencies, and I'm not going what to go back nonsense. up in those constituencies. You messed around in the shadows for and weeks two, and weeks and weeks, number and two, now when it comes out okay. that you're involved, you will not go up there and be oh, accountable no, to the people of that riding for your involvement. They have a right to expect okay, that. Okay, let's, let's let him answer. Go ahead. We have been transparent with everything that we've done in those ridings. When asked how much money we spent, we disclosed everything. When asked how much the government has spent in those ridings, how much the NDP has spent on polling, they won't tell us. How much they've spent on outside organizers, they won't tell us. How much they're spending in government advertising up there, they won't tell us. We have been completely transparent with this whole thing, if and I'm proud of that record. Okay. Okay. Why can't you be as transparent as, just, as we've been through this whole process? You would go up there and be accountable to those yeah. people, and you would debate Mr. Brady. You would have no fear of that. And I ask you, why are you so afraid of okay, debating we, Mr. Brady? You were transparent. Already, you went to lie about the budget, and you wouldn't have this problem you have right now. Okay, let's go back to the phone, because there are lots of people waiting. Uh, Serge in Victoria. Yeah, the thing is, when I get me, the NDP is asking everybody else to be accountable. Yeah. But they don't seem to have been accountable during the election, lying to us that the budget was uh, in the black while it was in the red. And now the, the ferry uh, corporation, who wants to change the ferry corporation in two routes, the one who make money and the one who doesn't make money. Uh, if they think that's accountable, I don't think it is. Okay, well, thanks, Serge, for calling in. Uh, now. Here, obviously, here's someone who was upset with the, uh, the budget shenanigans that apparently went on. The NDP said they balanced the budget two years in a row before the last election. They got back into power. Surprise, surprise, we're up to our, up to our eyeballs in red ink. People are angry about that, Graham. Yeah, I understand that. I understand that, and I know that, uh, I mean, we have to work hard to win the confidence of the people. But the issue today is recall and how we use this legislation. As I've said earlier, the law is open. People can use it any way they want. But I say the people of British Columbia have a right to be fully informed before they sign that petition. And Mr. Lanigan and the Canadian Taxpayers Federation and others, I don't believe we're being fully accountable to them. They won't even okay. go up and speak to the people of Skeena directly. Instead, they work in the shadows, behind the scenes, until they're flushed out, and okay. then they run and hide in Victoria. The shadows are on a program right, right now. We're, we're going <laughs> to work ridiculous. behind the shadows for a few seconds while we go to these, this commercial break, and we'll be right back. No interest for 48 months. Now, own a new Transport, Safari, or GMC pickup and pay no interest for 48 months. It's true. Dave Wheaton, Pontiac, and General Motors bring you 0% financing for four years. Plus, get 2.9% financing for 48 months on most other 97 and 98 models. No interest for 48 months. No interest for 48 months on Transport, Safaris, and GMC pickups. Incredible sale price and General Motors financing mean huge savings. Now at Dave Wheaton, Pontiac, Buick, GMC, Victoria. When should you plant geranium cuttings? What's the only time of year to safely move peonies? How long can live Christmas trees remain indoors? Get answers to these and other questions by ordering the Get Up and Grow Gardening Guide in Calendar for 1998. Gord Nickel, host of the Get Up and Grow TV show, has compiled over 360 useful tips to help novices and green thumbs alike succeed in the garden. All of this timely information has been combined with rich botanical illustrations to give you an invaluable resource. Hi, I'm Gord Nickel, host of Get Up and Grow, seen every Saturday morning on Czech TV. Order the Get Up and Grow gardening guide and calendar now and you'll receive a Forget-Me-Not seed package at no extra cost. 
To order your gardening guiding calendar, send $12.99 plus $2 shipping and handling to the address on your screen. Or call 1-888-456-5577 and have your credit card handy. The guide is also available at Canner Nursery in Victoria, Abbotsford, and Chilliwack. Call now and get growing in 1998. My New Year's resolution, our best Boxing Day ever. The Boxing Day Clearout at Hastings Frigidaire Appliance Store means great savings on the world's best-selling appliances. You've had your turkey, now let's talk turkey. Save money now on Frigidaire. One onlys, floor models, scratch and dents are all priced to clear out. We want to stay Canada's number one Frigidaire store. We have to sell appliances. There's only a short time for Boxing Day Clearout values at Hastings Frigidaire Appliance Store, 2100 Douglas Street. Make your resolution, come on down. Hi, welcome back to Tyabji. I'm Mike Smith of the Vancouver Province. I feel like a bit of a hockey referee with our, with our two guests here trying to keep them apart. Away the whistle. <laughs> uh, we're going to go now to uh, a few more of your comments. Uh, here's our question of the day. We're hearing a lot about the possible recall of the politicians forcing new elections in their ridings. Do you see this as a benefit or a threat to the democratic process and why? Here's what you had to say. I don't see the recall as being any kind of a threat to the democratic process, more like it's a uh, you know, the part of the democratic process. These people aren't representing us, and so therefore I don't think they can really be expected to hold on to their positions, you know, if that's the case. Well, it could be a benefit, in my opinion, if, uh, for instance, politicians go on the warpath and they promise a lot of things to a lot of people, and they don't keep them. I would, myself, I would like the opportunity to kick them out, and this seems to be one of these opportunities. So if it works, I would certainly like to find out more about it because in the Prince George area apparently there is a, re uh, a good enough uh, reason to believe that it could happen there. Maybe we should need an experiment like that to find out what it does for us. <laughs> yeah, they should be made accountable for what they're, what they're doing. Um, like I say, right now the forest industry is in a big mess. You got the uh, fault mill down, you got all the small loggers down. You got right now this town's uh, Nobody's working. Same times are tough. Being recall would uh, would uh, solve that. Oh, it sure wouldn't hurt. I think so. Yeah, definitely. Again, lots of split opinions on this topic, and I know we're getting some split opinions too on our phone lines. And let's go to uh, speak to Eric in Vancouver. Hello, Eric. Yeah, hi, Mike. Um, hi. I've I've never uh, belonged to any political party because I don't believe that uh, the system of of uh, political parties works. Uh, preferably, I'd rather see. All, all uh, MPs be independents, and I think then recall would probably work better. But what's happening is uh, this is absolutely an abuse of the process. As I've uh, been observing and reading the news, uh, this is a complete abru abuse to to have outside organizations involved in. in well, there's 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 a bit of a, there's a dispute about whether how much influence outside organizations are having. But why do you think it's an abuse? Because if people can gather 40 percent of a riding's voters in 60 days, I mean that's a pretty tall order. Don't you think that's a that's a pretty that's a pretty much a condemnation of the, of the sitting MLA? Absolutely not. What what the abuse is, Mike, is the abuse is of the people who showed up and voted in the last election, and now those people's rights are being abused abused because they used the democratic process. Now you've got a whole group of people who may get caught up in one or two single issues, running ahead with a huge campaign, drawing in people, and like I said, using the outside organizations. Apparently, there were some speakers from the U.S. up there created a big kerfuffle in Prince George and so on, and and those people then run run basically a re-election campaign. So what we're faced with and what seems to be on the horizon here is uh, our politicians are not going to have time for anything except running, uh, looking after their, their behinds and constant recall over and over. I mean, every time uh, Gordon Campbell opens his mouth, uh, the truth doesn't come out. I mean, why isn't he being recalled? Uh, well, John Cretien, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe I mean, he will get recalled. <laughs> I mean, isn't, it a good, isn't it a good thing that Paul... Eric, thanks a lot for your that's, call. That's uh, isn't it a good thing that politicians are watching their behind all the time? Well, What's yeah, wrong with that? There's a very very good point raised here, and that is about partisanship. And I noticed that Mr. Lanigan was nodding his head in agreement with the caller's statement that he hadn't been a member of a political party. He wished political parties didn't exist. But we know, I, I know, Mr. Lanigan, that uh, your organization, I checked your website out last night, says you are officially nonpartisan, you're not allowed to carry membership cards. 
But I also know that you were involved with social credit in 1991. Yeah. In fact, you managed the campaign of a former SoCred minister under yeah. uh, Bill Vanderzam. Well, he's been and, and the about question, that. He's yeah, and once know, again, big surprise. But, no, I mean, this is nothing new. But the thing is, your new. organization says you're nonpartisan, but I mean, you never shed partisanship. You didn't shed it uh, in 1991. Partisanship still exists. You can't. I don't believe most people believe that. And the question is, why only the NDP? Is there no, I mean, have you sent out letters yeah. to British Columbians to your members asking about a recall of Gordon Campbell and the Liberals? Let me answer that. If Absolutely. people in Gordon Campbell's constituency want to launch a recall campaign, they're entitled to do so. Did, have you what sent letters out to them like you did to NDP constituencies? Yes no. or no? No, we haven't. Yeah. But I don't think Which you can compare. I don't think what you can. I don't think you can compare what Gordon Campbell did with this mailer, a criticism that we led as an organization, by the way, with what Glenn Clark did, and that is deny British Clemens an informed vote in the last election. That is a I'm far more serious to offense. I'm happy debate issues any day, including in the next election. The issue you won't is debate the budget, your, though. You keep okay. talking the issue about is me your and my partisanship. And everything else. Your partisanship. Your your okay. organization claims to be Listen. nonpartisan. Okay, let me just cut you off. Yeah. Let, let, let me just cut you off there, Graham. The next the next election. Parties in the organization. We might get to fight the next election sooner than we think, actually, if, if things keep going the way they are. Let's just go back to the phone lines and speak to Joanne in Surrey. Yes, good afternoon. Extremely interesting program, gentlemen. And I'd like to say something to the host of the show. Um, your uh, guest next to you, the NDP, I understand where he's coming from because what's on the table when it comes to his position. We have all, uh, in the last a couple of years, been doing a lot of reading and listening to what's going on behind the scenes. I think it was Wednesday or Thursday's paper of the province where the judge himself on the front cover talked about the dirty tactics in the backroom deal over this mill. The skein of cellulose. Uh, that's mill. correct. And uh, I, I take my hat off to the gentleman, regardless if he was with the Socreds or whoever. If, as we, the residents, all know today, we are being downloaded on to such a degree that we can't even grasp what they did to us last month. It's just changing on a, a, such a, a fast track that there's no accountability to no matter who says what. Mr. Clark made lots of promises when he was uh, finance minister, and then when he took over the leadership of another um, um, situation and made a lot of promises, within three months after taking on the leaderships of these portfolios, things started to change, capital gains, a variety of different things. I don't ever hear the NDP talking about all the promises that they made to the people that are on tape in, in public that can be brought back to be put in front of your face and Mr. Clark's face. Okay, Joanne, let me just, let me just cut you off there. Thank you very much for your very thoughtful phone call because um, we have to go to a break fairly soon. You know, I think the issue of who's involved and who's bankrolling the campaigns maybe is muddying the issue. I think our caller gets to the point. She's uh, upset about broken promises by the government, and now yeah. she wants some accountability. Right, well yeah. this, is what the, this is what the budget lie issue is about. They talk about back rooms and shadowy agendas and all that. The books were cooked behind the doors. People could not see and understand what it is that they were voting okay, for in the Graham, last election. Uh, before you launch on a, on, a, on a reaction to that, because I know you have something to say about that, we're going to stop right now and go to a break. We'll be right back with our guests and your phone calls. Here's a cheesy moment you might want to miss. And here's one you don't. So, go get some crackers, apple jelly, and cheddar cheese. Put the cheese on the crackers, spoon on the apple jelly. Voila, you can't get any cheesier. Well, then again, maybe you can. This cheesy moment is just a reminder. When you've got cheese, you've got choice. What do you get with Amigo Digital? Every month, you get 100 anytime minutes and 100 first incoming minutes free. Yeah, I'm free. You get called display. Staying in touch just means staying in. And oh yeah, there's no long-term contract. I call the shots. And you get it all for just $19.95 a month. Amigo Digital. It goes with you. Cigarette, sir. Bless you. Poppies. Now, low. Between the crosses, row and row. If ye 
break faith. Over here, Major. Mm -hmm. We shall not sleep. Major McCray? In Flanders fields. What is it? I'm not sure. John McCrae of Montreal died in the war, but his poem is still spoken aloud when men, women, and children gathered to remember. Hi, welcome back to Tyabji. I'm Mike Smith from the Vancouver province, sitting in for Judy. We've got some excellent shows coming up. Tomorrow we're going to be discussing the BC forest industry, particularly the Skeena cellulose bailout. Uh, the day after that, we're going to be talking about a green Christmas. That's an environmentally friendly Christmas, and we'll have some hints for you on that. Um, on Boxing Day, we'll have a repeat program on sex offenders that have escaped the justice system, and the show will be taking a day off on Christmas Day, because we all want to be with our families and friends and loved ones on that day. There's not a lot of love going on in the program today. <laughs> because we have two guests who are, uh, have extremely different polarized views on this legislation. We have Graham Bobrick of the NDP MLA for New Westminster and Troy Lanigan of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. And uh, uh, we still have a lot of uh, phone calls uh, on hold. So I want to speak right now to Stephen in Nanaimo. Oh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, gentlemen, as a veteran of the Second World War, we and uh, millions of us died for democracy. I, I just don't understand. Uh, when I read statistics that... Uh, Canadians get one-third of one percent of the news of the day, and then I read the next statistics that tell us that British Columbians suffer the greatest amount of mental illness than any other province in Canada. It's no surprise that I hear callers like we just heard from the NIMO, or from uh, Vancouver, rather, condemning democracy. It's just that they don't know which way is up, but uh, there's a bit of irony in all this. Uh, and by the way, I take umbrage with the NDP man condemning uh, the fact that... Uh, Troy goes to the States once in a while when uh, it's well known that uh, the Clark government is making hundreds of phone calls to Washington, D.C. all the time. <laughs> but uh, the thing is that uh, 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 democracy uh, uh, is so in short supply here in Canada, we've got a dictatorial uh, uh, federal government uh, uh, that, that's got everybody on their knees, and uh, the, the Clark government, uh, uh, I, I just don't understand how the Clark government can be so ruthless uh, during Christmas by raising speeding fines when they just raised them. Uh, in the past, uh, shortly, uh, they're, they're doing everything to aggravate Canadians uh, in British Columbia. They've got the taxes so high here that business is running away to other parts of the country and to the United States. And then they wonder why recall. Uh, it's unbelievable that the NDP are trying to throw the, the, the banner uh, over to Mr. Lanigan, who has really nothing to do with this recall situation at all. Okay, he, Stephen, He's let only me... representing people who are taxpayers, for God's sake. Thank you for the program. Okay, Stephen, thank you very much for calling in. Uh, he's expressing, the caller's expressing a lot of frustrations with the NDP government. I think what maybe we're seeing here is some um, frustration with our current system but, of government. Yeah, because here you have a government in power that won, I believe it was around 39% of the popular right. vote. They actually got fewer votes than the Liberals and Gordon Campbell, yet, yet the NDP have a majority in the legislatures. Uh, Maybe people look at that and say, why can't we get a little bit more accountability? And, and that's the problem. There's no check or balance on that 39%, which hold 100% of the power until four or five years when they get around to calling an election at their convenience. So I hope, and, and I say this in a, in a very nonpartisan sense, I hope that this will expedite other changes in the system so that we can look at, for instance, changes in our electoral system and ask what kind of insanity do we have where 39% of the vote garners 100% of the power in our legislatures. So this is an evolution. Uh, recall, the initiative law, which is not workable unlike recall, and hopefully changes to our electoral system will all add improvements to accountability and a more democratic system. A lot of people think the recall legislation maybe won't be un won't be workable well, in the end either I because mean, a lot of people think that the campaigns are losing steam. Well, we, we can't we can't have it both ways because I I believe that a lot of people said the recall law wasn't workable and now we see there are many people, including okay. you, I believe you don't believe it's workable. No, no, I so I've I've I never said that I never it's said gonna, that it was not going to work. work. Is that your prediction? Or? No, it's not my prediction at okay. all. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I'd like to say because I know we're running, we're running out of time. We are. We want to get some I'd like calls, to thank, so. you know, Mr. Lanigan because he he has really uh, brought the issue to the fore. Um, he hasn't talked about Paul Ramsey or Helmut Giesbrecht as individual representatives. He hasn't talked. What he has been talking about is the last election. And that's what this is really all about for some people, is refighting the last election. It's about that for the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, 
for Carrie Simpson and the Citizens Research Institute didn't like a particular piece of legislation and want to bring up about the downfall of the government. But I support the law. I mean, it's there for the people to use. And the debate you is, support it, how should we use it? You support it, but the Premier apparently is going to change it. Let's speak to uh, Stuart in Victoria. Hello, Stuart. Yes, uh, you know, Bobrick, I think you better shake your head a bit. But anyway, um, Glenn Clark has come out and basically has said that he does not think the, the law is being used as, as it was intended. Uh, it is right now, as far as I'm concerned, it is uh, being direct democracy where people are getting a right to say, listen, you Turkey, uh, Ramsey and Giesbrick and, and whoever else, uh, you are not doing your job. You've lied to us, which if you'd done in court, would it'd be a criminal charge of perjury. Uh, you, are, you know, you're not doing your job. We want you out of there, and we want someone there that will represent us. Uh, and, and that's plain and simple. And, and, you know, and now Glenn Clark is getting sour grapes. And you talk about outside groups. Uh, uh, I, I recall Ken Giorgetti of the BC Federation saying they are going to make sure all their union members and, and uh, all the representatives they can will be up there to support Ramsey and Giesbrick. So don't go talking about outside groups uh, coming in and trying to influence it. Uh, you know, the, and uh, it's weighted so heavily in, in, the, in the incumbent's uh, favor. The, the what law, way the law is written right now, it's uh, it's just inconceivable that you know you, there'd be any changes. If anything, I hope the changes there are changes, and that makes it easier uh, for it to take place. Okay, thank uh, Eric, thank you very much for your phone call. Again, some frustration with the government, and we're just very close to another break here. But perhaps yeah, I'd like well, to respond. Well, I think that's that's to be expected. Governing is is a difficult thing. Any political party will run into that, and I predict I'll predict right here today that as long as we have a recall law in British Columbia. Uh, recall will be part of political discourse. It wouldn't matter if Gordon Campbell was in office today, people will be threatening him with recall and his members if they were in government because of hard decisions they have to make. That's the nature of the system. I understand public frustration. These are tough times to govern in, uh, but as politicians we have to live with it. Okay, uh, thank you very much Graham for that. We're gonna go to a break and we'll be right back with our guests and, uh, I'd, well, with our guests, bye-bye. <laughs> When you need to stop a cough, get fast-acting, long-lasting relief with Vicks Formula 44. One dose coats your cough-irritated throat to start soothing in five minutes and can last through the night. For fast-acting, long-lasting relief, get Vicks Formula 44. The Grime Zones. They're tough. They're all over the house. And they're about to meet their match. Yes, Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean's got the muscle for tough grime like stovetop grease, mudroom muck, and kids being kids dirt. It all shines clean because Mr. Clean muscles under to lift off dirt faster, better than the leading pine cleaner. Mr. Clean takes the tough out of grime zones everywhere. Let the clean shine through with Mr. Clean. What's CoverGirl's nail pick? Nail slicks. Base, color, and top coat, all three combined in one step. Easy. A three-in-one polish. How in the world? Easy, breezy, beautiful. Cover girl. Starfruit, where new ideas are born, presents the Citrus Express. It peels the fruit, sections it perfectly, and extracts the juice of large oranges or grapefruits in a single step. Check these value-added features. A citrus corer, skid-proof rubber vase, pouring spouts, and a stainless steel blade. The Starfrit Citrus Express. There's nothing else like it. Starfrit, why settle for less? Celebrate with Party Time Volume 3, featuring Millie Vanilli, Salt and Peppa, Ram Jam, The Contours, and Boney M. 23 tracks of pure party mania, including Rick James. Over 75 minutes of explosive hits. It's the greatest collection of party hits ever. Pump it up at your next party with Party Time Volume 3. You just can't party without it. From SPG, in stores now.
Hi, Tamara, welcome back to Tyabji. Uh, tomorrow we've got another terrific program for you. We'll be talking about the BC forest industry. It's in a rather serious decline at the moment. That spells big trouble for the NDP government too, never mind recall. Uh, we'll also be talking about the, uh, the bailout of the Skeena Cellulose Pulp Mill, another extremely controversial issue for the government. You know, our hour has just flown by here so quickly because we've been talking about an issue that has got everybody hot under the collar here in BC. Not only the two politicians that are facing recall campaigns, but politicians on all sides, all opinion leaders, uh, some of the big business leaders, the big union leaders, because recall is something that's so different and so new for us here in British Columbia. Keep an eye on Glenn Clark because he's going to change that legislation because it's such a threat to him and that'll be interesting when he tries to do that. Thanks very much for joining me today. I'm Mike Smith from the Vancouver province. We'll see you tomorrow. Cool.